What's up, guys? It is now time to talk some NFL and uh, to talk about the sport that has the theme song that uh, Steve the Thrill Hill from the men's room on 99.9 KISW uh, here in Seattle likes. Time to open up a beer. Alright, even though this is, this is not um, the official uh, beer for the NFL, but that's alright. Sorry, I don't even know what this beer for the NFL is. Isn't it like Budweiser? Hello? What? Dog? <laughs> oh, it is Budweiser? Yes! Oh, <laughs> dang, they sponsor everything. Haven't you seen the Seahawks logos on Bud Light and... Oh, Bud? it's not Budweiser, it's Bud Light. It's well, Anheuser-Busch? Whatever. Alright, anyway, I don't want to get into this. Same uh, company. Okay. You're not even... That, whatever, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Let's go. go. Alright, uh, so we're going to talk to Seattle Seahawks first, and then it's going to be followed by uh, the... Oakland, Oakland Raiders, Raiders. Uh, which is going to be a really weird segment cause for me. Because, right, that's all right. Well, because it's like every single time I think of the Raiders, I, I think of a team I can't take seriously because they haven't been good for so long. Yeah. Uh, Let's not talk about that Super Bowl. Anyway, there's your call. <laughs> um, all right, so there we go. We got the Seattle Seahawks recap last year. Um, last year was, I don't know, I guess, actually, now I remember where I stood last year. Last year was a soap opera. Yeah. It was like, oh, T.J. is going to be our quarterback. We don't want him to be our quarterback. Wait a minute. Maybe we do want to be our quarterback. Our offensive line stinks. Wait, our offensive line is getting better. Yet we have injuries. You know, our play calling stinks. Now our play calling is better. We're not in the playoff hunt. We're in the playoff hunt. I mean, just, it was, it was so, maybe it was because I was living with Hans. But it was like, it was so, like, I have never, ever, like, after a, the Seahawks lost to the Arizona Cardinals in their last game, I have never, ever turned off the TV saying, thank God I don't have to watch the Seahawks for the rest well, of the year. Well, that's sometimes it happens like, like that. I just, I don't, like, <clears throat> am I wrong? No, I mean, you're not <laughs> wrong at all. I mean, from a, from a fan's perspective, just listening to people on, on Twitter, Facebook, and, and you know, just, just general all sorts of media, especially on SeattleTimes.com. It's just people, they didn't, I think it was just a, a team that was in flux. They didn't know, it was definitely going into the whatever this new regime is going to be and trying to figure out really what the right quarterback was. But I talked about this actually when uh, the Seahawks signed uh, Matt Flynn from Green Bay. I said, you know, guys, the Matt Flynn you're expecting to see, the guy who threw 400 yards and, 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 and did so awesome, had a great offensive line in front of him to make sure that he performed at his best. You can't be that great of a quarterback if you spend the majority of the time looking at the sky. Plain yeah. simple. And when you have that many holes on the offensive line, which is what what, what the main problem was, you're, you're, you're not going to be as, as successful on the offensive end. Now, Marshawn Lynch did really, really good and kind of helped, you know, patch up those things. But when it came to the passing game, it really wasn't, there wasn't much there. Well, and another thing, too, is I, I think that uh, I think that made it really difficult for Seahawks fans. And... I seem to be the only Seahawks, well, I, I don't want to say only, and I don't want to put myself on a pedestal, right. but I seem to be one of the few Seahawks fans that actually, you know, are, have some perspective. We had Matt Hasselback. We let him go. It's replaced by Tavares Jackson. Oh, people want Matt people Hasselback did, to go. They say, he's too old. He can't, he can't handle it anymore. Yeah. He throws too many interceptions. Well, he forgot the offensive line. Stunk. Well, and another thing, too, is it's, what I was going to say is it's always hard to move on from that you know, that, that quarterback, that, that the one that you love so much, the one that took you to the Super Bowl. Whether, whether you like it or not, Hasselbeck is the greatest quarterback in Seahawks history. Well, yeah, Period. Super Bowl. Super Bowl, passing records, playoff wins, come from behind wins in the fourth quarter. He's got the stats. And so, that being said, I think it would be, it was it was a hard year for Hawks fans in general because not only, which we'll talk about with the QB situation, um, it was hard for to let go of that. And meanwhile, you got Tavares Jackson doing whatever he wants, and you got Charlie Whitehurst throwing for 97 passing yards against Cleveland. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, Jesus. And, uh, but then you got half of succeeding for a brief period of time in Tennessee last year. So I'm sure that was hard as well. Well, of course. You know. Um, so the Seahawks finished at 7-9. and nine. Uh, Unfortunately, 7-9 and nine was not good enough to win. Not this year. Oh, that was so awesome. I, dude, I was like the only person saying, like, dude, we're 7-9. and nine. Who cares? We won our division. We're in the playoffs. Well, you know, that's, that's the thing. I was like, only in the NFC West can you finish with a sub-500 record and still make the playoffs. Yeah. And, uh, but then you guys will always have that hat and that T-shirt that says NFC West champs. And, and, you know, and you won a playoff game. So I was like, you know what? They proved that anybody can actually go to the playoffs and win. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so to recap the standings, San Francisco at 13-3. and three. I didn't, 
That was they had an amazing season. Yeah, thirteen and three. Uh, Smith looked like like a boss out there. I'll go in more about Aaron <laughs> Smith later. But uh, Arizona eight and eight, Seattle seven and nine, <clears throat> St. Louis uh, two and fourteen to wrap out the NFC West. So um, the big story right now that's going on in Tennessee is the quarterback situation where we got Matt Flynn and Russell Wilson, maybe Tavares Jackson competing for the starting spot. I say mm-hmm. maybe because this is being filmed right after the third preseason game. Um, Which I have the stats for, and I'll probably use that in my point here in a minute. Yeah, yeah I, I, you know, I originally thought before yesterday that Matt Flynn should start. I thought he was going to start. We paid him the money. Yeah, we paid him the money. <clears throat> he played okay. You know, he had one really good preseason game, one really bad preseason game. Mm-hmm. And that's not that bad. <clears throat> but then Russell Wilson comes out and plays unbelievably well yeah. in the third preseason game. And the third preseason game is known as the dress rehearsal for the season. Mm-hmm. Based on what he did, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that he didn't do that against a weak opponent in Kansas City. But if you're going to do that in the preseason, when you're not using ha- all of your playbook, right? And if you're going to do, and it's and it's against the starters, it's, it's not it's, it's against, not against yeah. second and third stringers. It's not. And and not only that, if if you did this with the second string two and third strings two weeks ago, yeah. If you can do that with, like you said, the starters. I'm sorry. As of right now, I think Russell Wilson should be the I, and, and I totally do mm-hmm. agree agree with it. And I know that that scout of scouts.com and ESPN.com after the draft said, you know, the biggest knock on him is his height. They said he's like, listen, at 5'11". Yeah. Something like he, that. He's about the same height as Seneca Wallace. Well, you know, and, and that's the funny part. <coughs> it, and it also goes to show me, because looking at the, the game on, 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 on uh, Friday. Yesterday. <clears throat> Yesterday. Yeah. That would be Friday. Friday. <laughs> uh, he threw he 13 of 19 for 185 yards and two touchdowns. Listen. It goes to show you that it doesn't necessarily matter how tall you are. If you're accurate, yes, I understand seeing over the line can be difficult. But at the same time, he's he's a moderately mobile quarterback, so you're, you're, you're going you're to see him be a little bit more mobile, but he's got the accuracy that they have to fear both his legs and his arm. And I think that's, what, going, to be, that's going to be a key thing. What you say is, is valid. What, what you say is valid. Mm-hmm. My only concern, I mean, I, I, I was going to say it was a problem, but he's played well in the preseason, right. so I can't say it's a problem. My only concern about Russell Wilson is that when we first drafted him, people made comparison between him and Seneca Wallace. Seneca now, Wallace pan out very well. now <laughs> Seneca Wallace was a good, solid, backup quarterback. Right. Keyword, backup. When you need him to start maybe one, maybe two games. Yeah, and you know, for the most part, he did his job as a backup. That's my only concern about him. Mm-hmm. Seneca Wallace couldn't see over the line, and that was an issue. The guy could run. He could throw when he could see, which yeah. was rare. Mm-hmm. But that's my only concern about Russell Wilson. The guy is short. We have seen before when quarterbacks can't see over the line, how it puts them at a disadvantage. Tell that to Drew Brees. He's six foot one. Yeah, but he's playing for an unbelievable I team. I don't care. He's six foot one. He's, he's, he's got a ring. He's, he's got a ring. He's six foot one. Russell Wilson is shorter than. I him. understand that, but the short, the sometimes shorter quarterbacks do, do, do sometimes succeed. I'm just saying. Give it up for the little guy. All right. <laughs> well, but then again, are we comparing? Do you want to compare Russell Wilson to Drew Brees, or do you want? Are we comparing him to Seneca Wallace? Because right now, you can't, you can't, experts you, are pr- are comparing him to Seneca Wallace, and that, and that is a suitable that that's a suitable uh, uh, compare and contrast. There, you can't compare somebody to Drew Brees. You can't compare to Drew Brees until he proves until he proves something. That's, yeah, that's that's, that's plain and simple. And not only that, he's shorter than Drew Brees. He is shorter than <laughs> Drew Brees, but but I mean, but at the same time, a good quarterback is a good quarterback. It doesn't matter. Does Rudy play for that be well? <laughs> I mean, granted, we're, we're not me there. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, this PTR right here, I have no interruption. You know, but Louis Blake did a good job, right? <laughs> no, it's just that's that's just my only concern. But yeah. based on what Russell Wilson did in the third preseason game, unfortunately, it is preseason, and I don't want to read too much into no, it. Definitely not. But the guy played unbelievably well against Tennessee and against Denver. In, and you know, Denver, which I'm sure you're aware of, is an unbelievably uh, okay. I'll just. Stop right there. <laughs> but then to go into Arrowhead and have one of a the... A place that's very, very tough to play. Yeah, and then to to do well against Kansas City. Now, the only thing that scares me about his performance is that it's against the Chiefs. Right. The Chiefs, I mean, there was a joke... Um, yes, I am going to go there. 
There was a joke that was said a couple of years ago about how there was a rumor where the Kansas City Chiefs were hiring prostitutes for every home game and so, uh, for every road game and some of the home games for each of the players. And it was just it was just a it was just a rumor and all was just like you know a bunch of paparazzi stuff. But it was brought up to John Clayton and he said, well, with that off offensive unit being so bad, I'm not surprised that this is true because it would be the <laughs> only way that they could score. <laughs> so, and you don't score until you score. As yeah, say. exactly. So uh, that's the only thing that. Uh, that scares me about Russell Wilson's performance against Kansas City. But, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I have to go to Wilson at this point. Yeah. You know, and, But uh, to be honest with you, I, I really would not be surprised if we are constantly having the dis- quarterback discussion like we did last year with Whitehurst and Jackson. But I wouldn't be surprised if Pete Carroll switches quarterbacks all the time. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I just can see it. The one thing that Pete Carroll and John Snyder has... Have, has proven, if you are not get, putting up results, they'll cut you. Yeah. The first big move they did was cut T.J. Houston's up. That was the first big move they did. The last thing, and he didn't even play a game, you know, for, for Carroll, a regular season game. This, uh, the big move, the guy that they cut last year, Aaron Curry. Got it, and both those guys made a pile of money and everything. They're like, sorry, you're done. So, yeah. because of that, I can see Flynn and Wilson switching back exactly. and forth throughout the season. I mean, I think, and that, that, that is... That that's probably a respectable thing to do. I just I just feel that you know if if he was six foot three, there there would there would definitely be a definite quarterback controversy going on right now. I just think that you know he just happened to have a really really good game on on Friday. Just and, the, and these things happen do they do happen in, in the preseason. I mean you catch a team sleeping a whole lot more often to go well they're put they're put they're putting in you know their 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 third round draft pick. We'll just kind of kind of take a step back. But I mean. Kansas City really has been kind of a wishy-washy team over the past couple of years, anyway. Which you would know. Yes. <laughs> so I mean, it's but but good but good on him. I'm not you know I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's, it shows to me that I think he made the right career decision to not do baseball and just and stick with football. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it, it, for those of you guys who don't know, he was at uh, NC State where he played uh, he played baseball and he also was playing football and then he chose to focus solely on football and so he left and he went to Wisconsin. <clears throat> Oh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was weird because he wasn't going to lose any eligibility because one, he was leaving the conference for one, and and two, because his scholarship was primarily with baseball, he didn't lose any eligibility. So it was like the first time he really got to see a collegiate free agent. So <laughs> it was very strange. It was very strange. <laughs> that um, so the other thing that uh, so we talked about, so I think we both can agree that Russell Wilson, as of right now, on August twenty fifth, two thousand twelve. Mm-hmm. Going into the Raiders, uh, the final game of the preseason game against the Raiders mm-hmm. should be the quarterback. Right. So I think both of us. I, uh, I think he should be, and that's okay. also provided uh, you know that we'll see what's going on with Clinton. He had he had he had some uh, some, know, ha- some throwing arm issues. Throwing arm issues. Yeah. We don't know if it's a rotator cuff. We don't know if it's an elbow or yeah. anything. It just you know he just has some soreness in his arm, so they so they chose to sit him. So why not put you know yeah. why not sit you know send the rookie in let let him go face the line see, and see what comes out. Well, and another thing too is you know we're not I mean we're we're paying Flynn. A, a good bunch, a, a good sum of dough. Yeah. But not as much as people realize. It's okay. If, it's like, it's like thirteen million for the yeah. preseason. So yeah. I mean, I mean, he's barely money. getting paid more than Whitehurst, which right. is, Whitehurst got ten million for two years. Mm-hmm. You know, so thirteen. You know. Yeah. So really, I mean, it's, really it's, 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 it's still it's, it's it's a great value pickup. Right. It really is, and I and quite frankly, looking at uh, Seattle's uh, draft picks this year. Um, they went really, really heavy in defense in the first round, which is fine. Uh, I don't get that. I, you know, I but don't. you know what? Sometimes it all came down to what the best player was at the time, and so it was. It wasn't really that bad. I mean, they came. They took in a defensive end in Bruce Irvin, uh, and then then Bobby Wagner at the inside linebacker uh, in, in in the second round, and then they finally jumped in to. They, they finally went. Oh yeah, they picked up Russell Wilson in the third round, which I still think is a is a smart value pick. Yeah, I mean, they, they could have picked up a quarterback in the first round. I just they, The quarterback I think they wanted got picked up, and so they figured, you know, we'll just wait. And I'm a huge believer in sometimes you got to step away from the quarterback in the first round. There's plenty of talent in the second, third, fourth, and fifth rounds. Again, Tom Brady, I hate the guy, but I love his game. You, uh, 199th uh, pick overall, three Super Bowl rings. Booyah! And of course, you would say that because the Raiders' biggest draft pick is a kicker. It's a kicker. You know, so of course you would. The best you get a Kowski in the first round. Who? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's 
if you want to talk draft picks about in, in the off season, which uh, I, I don't think we planned, no. But if you want to go there, my biggest issue with the draft class this year um, for the Seahawks is when Pete Carroll first took over, he went with needs, mm-hmm. and as you said, didn't go with necessarily the best player, Bell Bell, but he went with the players that he wants to go with the system, and I was okay with that. Yeah. Well, we know that the defense is going to go. Up. It's going to keep improving. It's going to they get had, better. They had to, put, they Carroll, had to reach all the defense. They really but, did. But, but Pete Carroll is a defensive guy. Right. And the defense last year, you know, improved dramatically yeah. throughout the season. So that's the reason why I was a little, like, I had a couple of mm-hmm. you know, raised eyebrows during the draft. Because if I'm Seattle and I have a track record of drafting what I need, I don't need any defensive players. I have all that help. I, I, yeah, I need. I have depth on the defense. I have good solid linebackers. I don't have to pay Aaron Curry anymore. Mm. I, I'm good. I need O line. I need a quarterback. Maybe a wide receiver. Mm. Uh, maybe um, maybe a fullback. Maybe the the only position that. I think is really, really solid is running back and yeah. Marshawn Lynch. So why am I going on the defensive side of the ball? That was my biggest problem in terms of what, like, I, I understand what you're saying. In terms yeah, of I mean, the defense secondary needs, needs, it, it does need, does need a little bit of work. I mean, it, it, on, on defense especially, you can never have too much. Well, you can say that about both of you, though. Yeah. I mean, no. but, <laughs> but again, you also got, you got to take into account of injuries and things like that. I would have loved to have seen Seattle go on the offensive line uh, perspective because, unfortunately, Russ McComb, is a bust. Well, I think he is. I mean, he's had too many injuries. He's got the high ankle sprain, which, when you the position that he plays, that's that's kind of a death now. That that's kind of the, the the tail end of your career right there. I mean, he, and he's so young and he had there was so much high hopes that he's not he's not he hasn't produced. Well, the thing, however, there was an article in the Seattle Times recently about that, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are not paying attention to Russell Okun because of what you just brought up, the injuries, and that's how we do. However, Russell Okun is looking very, very good right now. Now, I, I, hope, to, I hope to see improvement. I, I, I really do. do. I, I do, too. And, and, and I'm not so much upset about Russell Okun not panning out because he's had some uh, success. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the big things, reasons why we won that game against the Saints is because Russell Okun was healthy and, you know, doing his job. My biggest concern is James Carpenter. Okay. You know, so I, I, I will I will disagree with Okun. I think there's still opportunity for him to pan I know, out. He's, he's still young. Yeah, yeah but I, I will, for him. But I will agree as of right now, Carpenter right now is not panning out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. So, all right, now to Sean. Um, we get to talk to you about... A player you love. <laughs> Absolutely love. I remember, like, we were going through show prep, and I said, so, uh, Seahawks. And he goes, all right, we'll talk about T.O. All right, here we go. I don't want to. All right. Really <laughs> don't, right. All right, so uh, before before we dissect T.O. Um, also, you're talking about quarterbacks. You know how much you love our quarterbacks. And my ass back, I really want to let you go, that's my quarterback. Oh. <laughs> don't talk about my quarterback. See, I, I, I don't say that's the truth. <laughs> For, four, uh, for 41 yards, averaged 25.5 yards uh, a catch, along of 40, and targets, I think that's what? Like, like that's how many times they threw him the ball. Yeah, uh, so three times. So he was two for three uh, in terms of not, catching not the ball. Not bad they dropped but a touchdown, Deshaun, for sure, touchdown pass in, in week one. But Deshaun, why, why, why is Terrell Owens? I'll just head Owens to the fire. Why is Terrell Owens such a bugaboo for you? Uh, Terrell Owens is a bugaboo for me because <laughs> he, he is a clubhouse catcher, plain and simple. You know, he'll be... And my number one fear, really, is not so much this season. It's in the future season. Because Terrell Owens will always give you his best season that first year because he knows he's only going to get signed to a one-year contract. After that first year, he wants to see if he can get that multi-year contract. And if it's anything over three years, that's when the problems start. That's when he's like, I want the ball all the time. Give me the damn ball, give me the damn ball. And then he becomes a complete clubhouse cancer. He throws his quarterback under the bus, which is funny because... Your job depends on your quarterback throwing you the ball. And if you're dropping the ball, and if you're complaining too much in public, and be ready to, be ready to quarterback, he's got, he's got other receivers to throw to. He really does. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's something that's, that's bothered me since, you know, the tail end of his career at, at San Francisco. And also, BT Dubs, Terrell Owens, did not last very long in the uh, indoor football league as well with the Allen Wranglers. That, to me, says it's a problem. And that's, that was supposed to be, you know, his, the equivalent, the, the football equivalent of, of rehab starts, basically. You know, something that all he had to do was keep his mouth shut. They would have thrown the ball. He was going to get 90% of the touches anyway. All you do is keep his mouth shut, catch the ball, score touchdowns. You're only score, you're only running now on average about 25 yards anyway. That's easy for you. You know what I'm saying? With, 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 I don't know what his 40 time is now, but I, I want to say he had a 40 time in the low fours. Yeah, something something like that. Something ridiculous like that. So I mean, I, I it, 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 it should <laughs> this should this should be a no brainer for him. And also, I like I said, I just don't want to see Seattle fall for it and give him a. Uh, four-year deal. I think at, at his age, they're probably only going to give him like two, maybe three years. You know, and also for Terrell Owens, he's got to be good because if he can't make it in Seattle, Oakland's not going to take him. <laughs> well, I don't think... He's not going to take him. Well, they already took him. Uh, Baltimore's not going to take him. I... He, here's my thing with you. I agree with everything you said. But I believe, and I think, that T.O. is on his last last pair of legs. The guy was in the, was in the NFL... Did, uh, retired and went to play in the indoor football league. That, from from a fan's perspective, that tells me that you're at the end of your career. Yeah. And you are doing whatever you can to still be a part of the game that you love. You're, I mean, this this is it for him. We're paying him very not that much money. It's like the veteran minimum or something. Like yeah, that. exactly. We're, well, okay, we're paying him the veteran minimum. I don't see them resigning him to a long term deal. I, I, d- I just I just don't see it. Particularly with I mean there's some things that Pete Carroll has done and there's some things that uh, Pete Carroll and John Snyder have done that I haven't liked. One of the things that I have liked is they they have made their team extremely flexible. And they have created a situation where they can easily cut players like that. Mm-hmm. I mean it's very much like so a, Bel- a Belichick frame of mind. Right. And uh, you, are, you are you are not irreplaceable. Right, exactly. And so, that being said, it, I don't think that Terrell Owens will be signed to a multi-year contract here in Seattle. I think it, he will have, a, I think he'll make the team, he'll... It sounds like, he'll, he, it sounds like he's going. Yeah, he'll make the team, he'll do what he needs to do to play, and at the end of the season, the Seahawks will likely say, sorry dude, enough's enough, or give him another one-year contract. And... Also, if he starts problems, this is not going to be like Dallas, Philadelphia, San Francisco. I hope they just cut him and kick him out. That's what I think that's, will that's, happen. That's, so. my, that's my number one hope. I yeah. mean, and I, also, I, I hope that he does well because, because I mean, with the, with the lockout, he also had the knee injury. So I mean, right. he, just took, he didn't really retire. He took the season off because, one, no one was going to pick him up uh, for what the main reason was. Plus, especially with the, with the knee injury. So, I mean, it gave him time to fully recoup and, you know, get, get some, you know, rehab starts, which he didn't really do a very good job of doing that. Yeah. You well, know. I mean, and particularly, I mean, no offense to the Everett Raptors here in Washington, but if you're playing it for the indoor football league, I mean, you're not playing on a very high level. Well, no. I mean, not, have, not, have you been to an arena football I have league? not been to an arena football yeah, league. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's something that's, all, that's on my bucket list of things to do. It, 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 it's it's a completely different game. I mm-hmm. mean, it's all about speed. It, it's like a combination of football, basketball, hockey, all in one. Yeah. You know, um, but it just, I just don't, I think... I would like to think that Pete Carroll and Doug Snyder would be smarter than yeah. than signing him to a long, yeah. long term uh, deal. So, uh, so you've had your say on T.O. I've had my say on T.O. Let's go over expectations. My expectations is eight and eight. That's what I think. Uh, That's super reasonable. Yeah, That's uh, super reasonable. But I, I just think this year, I just think this year, it's going to be a fun year. There's not that much expectations in terms of competing and going to the playoffs. We got to get past Arizona. We got to get past San Francisco. Okay, but here's the deal: we have a favorable schedule. Sure, people. I mean, uh, Christy and I, we already have a Dallas Cowboys fan talking trash, like, "Oh, we're gonna beat the Seahawks. We got tickets, and we're gonna actually gonna go to the Cowboys game." Oh, nice. And I keep looking at him straight in the face and saying, "But you're coming here. The Green Bay Packers are coming here. The New England Patriots are coming." here. Here. The New York Jets are coming here. Let's look at the week team, shall we? Miami. We have to go there. Okay? Nothing against, you know, 
Hey, Dolphins, but, going, but going from west to east is, is a problem for a But we team. almost beat the Miami Dolphins last time we played. And that, that was, was with scout. and that was with three receivers in that injury riddled year. Mm-hmm. Now I'll give you the fact that I, I do think I actually do think uh that we will lose this game, but but uh, because of uh, the weather. But Buffalo's not very good. We we're there in other words what I'm trying to say is the hard teams are coming to Seattle. We have to go visit the weak teams. Right. Our schedule is extremely favorable, and it, because of that, why I think we're going to make some noise. I think, um, you know, I think there's a good shot that we can. It's not guaranteed, but I think there's a good shot we can beat Dallas. I think there's a good shot we can beat Green Bay, New England. Um, another one that I have is uh, Arizona on the road. Um, so I think there's a good shot that we could be. We, there's a good. I think eight and eight is reasonable, and maybe even a little bit more. I don't want to say division title just yet, but I think there might be some weeks where people are going to say, wow, we really don't want to play Seattle this year. That's good. I was so, going to say, I, I had I them at 9-7. 9-7? 9-7. 8-8, 9-7. That seems, that seems to be about right. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, with, that's, 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 that's still a tough haul with, with, with Green Bay, New England. But they're coming here. I know they're, they're coming, coming here. They're coming here. here. And, this, and this is false start central out here. Yes, it is. That's, a, that's how it works. I mean, it's, I went to, again, going to, just going to, I went to, been to a couple preseason games. I've only been to preseason games for Seahawks games. It's really weird, but. Well, I, that's the only ones you can afford. I, I have <laughs> yet to go to a regular season. No, I've had chances to go. Because mm-hmm. I, I know people in, in that uh, have tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, you know. You, you, um, <laughs> But uh, it's just a lot of it. A lot of it's it's on. Gotta get though. diamond club tickets for Manor. Cause I'm awesome. Yay! Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Jake! No, no, no. Anyway, keep going. But I mean, it's, I, I I I can see the Jets. Beating, I can see you guys beating the Jets. I can almost see you guys either beating either Green Bay or New England. I can't. See, I can't foresee you maybe beating Auburn. I don't think so. What about Dallas? Tony Romo's still there. No said. I'm serious. <laughs> what does that mean? That doesn't imply anything. I Tony Romo does not have a favorable record in Seattle. He just doesn't. Yeah, but um, there, actually, I forgot about that. But I, I thought. <laughs> and, the, and the thing is, I'm not. T- I really believe it or not, I'm not talking about the whole herd around the world. I'm not talking about that. It's just he doesn't. Pl- for some reason, he hasn't necessarily had a great record here. No, he does, he hasn't. But I was going to say the reason why we have a chance is because T.O. probably wants to shove it to the Cowboys. Of course he does. You know, Everybody so. wants to shove it to a team that, you know, they, they feel that they've gotten, you know, shined off. So, well, that will do it. Uh, before we break off, uh, for N- N- NFC West, I have San Francisco winning the division, Seattle in second, Arizona in third, St. Louis in fourth. What do you think? That sounds about right to me, too. I'm not going to lie. I we are on the same page. We are on, on the same page on this one. I mean, so. yeah, it's... It, Okay, the the NFC West is all it's always really wild anyway because you never know. Again, if Seven and I can get you a title, anything's possible. That is true. <laughs> that is true. But it is not as weak as the AFC West. No, which we will talk about in our next segment uh, here on Football Week. We're going to break down the Oakland Raiders. Uh, I'll try to keep Deshaun calm down. Uh, <laughs> not excited. Yes. Well, you should be because uh, I mean, granted, uh, the Raiders had a okay season last year. I mean, they. They met your expectations. Yeah. So, but we'll break that down next here on Football Week. And, we'll change uh, the battery out first. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll uh, be back in a second.